All right, in this video, we're going to look at how to make an unlock screen in KLCK custom lock screen. And to show you that, I'm going to power my screen off, power it on, and you can customize this to your liking. But for the basic setup, my unlock code is this one, this one, then this one, then this one. Now you'll notice the unlock icon turn blue. You can customize this thing to make it not change colors at all. That way, if somebody tried to unlock your device from K-Lock, they would not see that saying, hey, I got it right. But now that it's blue, I can press that. It unlocks my device. Let me show you what happens if we do the incorrect code. If I do this one, this one, this one, and then I try to unlock, it's going to reset everything. And you may notice down here, teaching purposes only, this code does change as I type things in. So maybe this one, this one, then I'm going to say this one. Well, that's not right. Remember, it's this one, this one, this one, and this one. Now again, you can change the unlock pattern once you download this free component from my free components folder. But suppose I went and tapped another one. It's going to reset it. The only time it's going to unlock the screen is when I do these in this particular order and then I press the unlock. For safety measures I did add something in here that you may want to delete. Teaching purposes only if I double tap that it will unlock the device. Now bear in mind K-Lock is not a true secure lock screen. There are ways to bypass it and whatnot. So bear that in mind. Check out my video I did a while back on custom lock screen and if you're in the KLCK community you know you know, Frank, the developer, he says it's not a true secure lock screen. It's just more for customizing. And yeah, some of you do have a device where you don't even use a secure lock screen. So K-Lock's just a way to customize your lock screen to your liking. With all that said, let's have a look. So look for the unlock pattern component in my free components folder. If I open that up and I go to globals, we can change the shapes. And I'll leave it up to you to dive into the component to see how I have that set up. And also with these particular shapes, we can change the size. We can change the margin between them. The always see is the always color. That's the color that we're always going to see before we press anything. So we can change that. The yes color, the green, we can change that to whatever we want. And then if I come back in here now, so the yes is going to be blue as I type these in. And notice when I click this last one, this unlock is going to turn to this light blue that I've called success. So notice it did do that. Now what we can do here is if you don't want to see that, if you don't want somebody to know if they're trying to unlock your device, say your kids or your husband or your wife or something, again, this is not a truly secure lock screen, but if you didn't want them to see that success, set the color to transparent. Therefore, that person would not know when they have typed in enough dots. I will show you how to type in more dots or take away dots. But now we don't see that success color, but yet it still will unlock our screen. But again, it will only do that when I do it in this particular order. But if I jack that order up, say I did just these three and I press that, notice we don't get the unlock screen uh, flash there in the advanced editor. So those are your main globals there. And then the last global here is a text global that I've called code. And I just got it set to be zero. So now let's come in here into the component. It's an overlap group, which has a stack group inside of it. And inside of that stack group, we have three rows, this row, this one, as you can see there, and then this third row. And then for these last two items, the unlock, that's an overlap group because I have to have a reset and a success here, something that I can hide or show depending on whether we typed in the correct code or not. And for teaching purposes only, I have that safety feature. If I double tap like I did there, it will unlock the screen. So if you want to delete that, that'll be fine. Now let's change the order of this code. For now, I'm just going to stick with four of them and I have a first, second, third. The first one, let's take this first one here and let's maybe uh, move it to the bottom right hand corner. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this first and I'm going to cut it and I'm going to come to the third row and I'm going to go ahead and paste it. So now it's that one over here. I'm just going to take one of these other ones. Like it don't matter. Any of these nodes are all the same. Basically it's one that you don't want to touch to successfully unlock your device. I'm going to cut that and I'm going to paste it up here. So now that no is right over there. Let's take the second and the third one. Let's cut those. And I'm going to go and put these into my second row. 
And now you may wonder, okay, we got fourth, no, no, second, and third. Let's take the fourth one and this no. That's gonna be this one and one that you can't see over here because of the stat group. I'm going to cut those and I'm gonna put those in the first group. So now let's just remember where each one is. The first one we put in the third row down here. So I wanna touch that one first. And then the second and third. So second and third, that's gonna be this one and then this one. And then last but not least, our fourth one is going to be the middle one up here at the top. So here is our unlock code now. This one, this one, this one, and this one. And notice we have, we don't see that success color because I made it transparent, but if I press that, I will get the unlock screen. So that's how you can easily rearrange this such that you can have your own little custom unlock pattern. Now, suppose you want to add a fifth one. So what's going on when I press these buttons here? Let's go to this first one. That's in our third row. Uh, the shape, the size, the paint. We do want to adjust the paint here. And basically I'm saying, okay, if TC cut GV code, GV code is going to be zeros or ones, that's it. So the actual code is not going to be a numerical code. It's going to be zero if it's not right, and it's going to be a one if it is right. Think kind of like binary or something like that. But if TC cut GV code comma one, what does that mean? If the first character in our code is equal to one, then I want the color of this shape to be GV yes, which is the one that I made recently at the beginning, that dark blue. If it's not, if the first character and our GV code is not one, we wanna show that always color. That's that uh, red color that I applied a moment ago. Well, notice down here for this teaching purposes, I have this showing what the code is. And since I did press that, notice if we press this shape, if I go over to its touch, toggle global switch, toggle the code, and the text is going to be, if GV code is equal to zero, let's set it equal to one, Otherwise, I'll set it equal to zero. So if I press this again, essentially what I'm doing is I'm toggling back and forth between zeros and ones. But now I'm ready to press my second piece in my unlock code. That's gonna be this one right here. Now when I press this, it's gonna change my code to one, one. I have two successful pieces that I've typed in in the correct order. Let me stress that to you. If I don't press, if I press any other one up here that's not the third one, it's gonna set it back to zero. Now again, let me click on this first one. That's gonna make this one blue. I'm gonna show you the code for this one and that will be right here in our second row. Here's the second one. That's why I have them labeled. Underneath paint. Now notice what our code is now, one, one. Well, here's what happens. If I go over to touch first for this second one and I go to its code, I'm still toggling the global switch and it says if GV code is equal to one, well, GV code is equal to one when I successfully press the first piece to my unlock pattern. So if it's equal to one, I now wanna set GV code to one one because technically I'm pressing the second correct button in my unlock pattern. Well, if GV code is not one, then we wanna set it equal to zero. So essentially what we're doing here is we're pressing the second correct button. So that means before we press it, GV code is gonna be one. When we press the second correct button in our unlock pattern, we wanna set this to one one. Think of that as having two correct pieces in your unlock pattern. But the only time we wanna do that is granted that we typed in the first button correct. That's what makes GV code equal to one. I hope that makes sense. Now, if I come back to its paint for this second button, if TC cut GV code comma two, if the first two characters in GV code are one, one, well, if we have pressed the first two buttons in the correct order, the code will be one, one. And that's what's going to light up the yes, the dark blue in this case, for our second button. Well, if this code, if the first two characters of GV code is not one, one, that means we have not typed in the first two parts to our unlock pattern correctly, then we wanna show that always color that dark red or whatever I had. So now let's go ahead and press the third button to this code, which is gonna be that one. Notice our code now is 111. We have pressed the first one, the second one, and the third one correctly. So let's go look at the third code, right beside the second one. Let's go over to its touch. The only time we wanna change this code to 111 is when we touch the correct one, and this is the third one now. 
So let's go look at the code. If GV code is one, 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 one means you've typed the first one in correctly and the second one in correctly. So when we press the third correct one, granted we've typed in the first two correct, we want to set GV code to one, 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 because we have now pressed the first three correctly. If GV code is not one, one, meaning we have not typed in the first two correctly, then we want to set it back to zero. It's an incorrect code. So that's what happens when we press this. Now, if I go back to paint, maybe you're seeing the pattern here. If the first three characters of GV code, TC cut, GV code comma three, the first three characters in GV code, if they are one, 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 this means we have pressed the first one correctly, the second one correctly, and the third one correctly. Then we want this third button to light up blue or whatever we have GV yes set to. Otherwise, we want to do the always color. So that's the first three. Now our fourth one, I believe it was, let me go ahead and press one in. That's incorrect. I know this one's not right. So it's going to set everything back to zero. But here's our pattern. One. Here's our second one. Notice we got one, one. Here's our third one. We now have one, one, one. And I think the fourth one was right here in the middle. Yes. So now notice we have four of these ones. That means we have pressed the first, second, third, and fourth correct. If I go to the fourth button, first row right there in the middle, if I touch that button, the only time I want to toggle this global switch to the fourth one, check out this code, if GV code is equal to 111, this means you have pressed the first one, the second one, and the third one correctly. Then you want to set it equal to 1111 because you just pressed the fourth one correctly. But if GV code is not 111, that means you have not pressed the first, second, and third in the correct order. But then you go and press this fourth button. It's not right because you haven't put the first three in correctly. You want to set it equal to zero. And then finally for this paint, if the first four characters of GV code, well, this will be the only four characters, but if the first four characters of GV code are equal to one, 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 then we want to see the yes color, that dark blue. And if it's not, we want to see the red color, that always color. Now, we have the correct code here. We've pressed the four buttons in the correct order, so we should be able to touch this now. So if I touch this, it's going to set my code back to zero, which is good for when you cut your device off and cut it back on, it'll be ready for you to type the code in again. Let me show you how that's set up now. So that's this last piece down here, unlock. I have an icon font, it's a material icon, and it's a lock, I've just called it reset. Its paint is always going to be that always color. It's touch, what you want to do here for this one. You want to toggle the global switch code to zero because sometimes we may try to unlock it too soon, like boom, boom. I have not pressed all four of my buttons. So if I press this, I always want to set it back to zero if I have pressed the incorrect code. Now inside of this same overlap group, I have another overlap group called success. It's the same icon font, but I only want this to show when I've put the correct code in. So I've put this inside of an overlap group for a reason. If we go to the layer for that overlap group, the only time I want to see this layer, when GV code is equal to 1111, that is when we have typed in all four pieces correctly to our unlock. We always want to see this overlap group. If the code is not 1111, we want to remove it. Now removing is key. So right now, this overlap group that I've called success, we don't have it. It's not there. It's been removed. And the reason why we want to remove it is because inside of this overlap group success, I have an icon font. You can't see it because it's been removed in this layer, but its touch is set to unlock the screen, the custom action unlock screen. And I also have a second touch here for toggle global switch. It's a single touch, but we're, we're doing two different things when we unlock our screen. We're unlocking our screen and we're setting the global switch code. We're setting that back to zero because this is what's going to reset it and allow us to type our code in every time we power our screen on, so to speak. So let me show you that in action. One, two, three, four. Now what has just happened here is that this overlap group that I've called success, its layer visibility is now always. Check out why because our code is now one, 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 one. So we always want to see it. As you can see there, we do have those four ones. You may say, well, hey, I don't really see it. But remember, we made this color transparent. We made the success color transparent 
But if I come here and touch this, notice we do get the unlock screen action and it does reset everything back to zero. Now if I do boom, boom, that's not right. If I do boom, boom, okay, that's the first two. But notice this overlap group's been removed. So if I touch this, I'm not going to see the custom unlock action because this overlap group success has been removed. And again, what sits inside of this success overlap group? The unlock button that when we touch it, we're going to unlock the screen. But again, one more time, the only time we will see this particular piece to unlock is when this layer is always shown. Right now it's removed. How do we make it always show? Type our code in correctly. Notice this did switch over to always, so now it's there and we can unlock our screen. I hope that makes sense. So one more thing to cover is, what if you want five pieces to your unlock screen or what if you wanna take one away? Well, let me show you how to add one and how we gotta change just a few things, nothing too crazy. I wanna to go to the location of my fourth one and I'm going to copy and I'm gonna paste it. Now we don't have to put it there. Where do you want the fifth one to be? Just for the sake of this video, I'm gonna put it right beside the fourth one, but you can put it wherever you want. So I'm going to delete one of these no's. And before I do that, actually, let me come to this no, and all of these no's are the same. I should have mentioned this to you sooner. It's paint is gonna be always color, and the touch for all of the no's is gonna automatically set that GV code to zero. So all of the no's will have a code of zero to apply to it. Keep that in mind. Because if we're pressing the ones that don't need to be pressed, we wanna reset that code every single time back to zero. But again, okay, so now that I've covered that, let's come back and let's delete that no, because now this fourth one, I'm just gonna rename this to the fifth. And here's what we wanna change about the fifth. We go inside that one, let's go to its paint, and let's change this now to Not only that, when we touch this thing, now what has happened here? This is when we're pressing the fifth piece to our unlock. So the only time we wanna change this to five ones, well, we gotta have four ones first of all. So if GV code is equal to four of these ones, that means we've pressed the first four correctly, then we want to make GV code be five ones. This is saying, hey, we finally pressed all five correctly. So that's good to go. And now we have to change one more piece and let's come back to the unlock spot. Let's go to the success, let's go to the layer. And the only time I want to see this one now is not when I have four of them, but I wanna see five of them being one, 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 or five ones, how many ever. So now we gotta have five pieces to our unlock pattern. And I think that is all that we have to change because the unlock piece here is just going to unlock the screen and it's gonna change that code back to zero. So let's give it a test. One, two, three, four. Now let's test it out. Let's see if this is, now it should not unlock now. So if I press this, notice it goes back to zero and we don't get that unlock screen notification down here. One, two, three, four, five. Boom, now we have five ones. This thing should be ready to unlock. And as you can see, it does. So now we have five pieces to unlock our screen. Let's save this. Let's go back to the home screen and let's power off and give it a test. One, two, three, four, five, unlock. Perfect. And uh, yeah, there you have it. There is an unlock pattern for your custom lock screen. And that's it for this video. I hope it helps.